what are you doing? What are you doing? We're going to outbid each other. This is what we're going to be doing the entire time, arguing the whole time. He's like, you know, Joker, why don't you get out of here? Why don't you get out of my fucking face? And Joker's like, which one? And Two-Face freaks out. I love that scene. Which one, Javi? <laughs> Hello, I just wanted to thank you for clicking on my video, and I wanted to let you know, not only do I create content on my YouTube channel here, Class in a Glass, but I'm also on Twitch, where I play single-player games, multiplayer games, I do movie reviews, cartoon reviews, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, it would be a big help if you can check out my Patreon, where you can gain access to uh, audio commentaries, reactions, and the ability to submit questions for my podcasts and video casts. And all that content can be found in the links below. In the meantime, enjoy the video. Video. But chat, we got to go ahead and review Batman, the animated series, episode 37, the strange thing, or excuse me, the strange secret of Bruce Wayne. Now, this is interesting. I want to do, usually I would just jump in and be like, okay, let's start talking about this episode. But I, I did a deep dive to, to an extent because I'm like, oh, wow. Was, I finished watching it. I was like, oh, this is such a good episode for God because they bring in a lot of the, old, the, the other villains too. Joker's in this, Two-Face, Penguin. They all interact with Hugo Strange. It's, it's, it's really funny. There's some great uh, gags and jokes in it. But because um, I was like, you know what? I, never, I don't remember Hugo Strange in the rest of the series. And so when I was reading the Wikipedia, because uh, the, they have the, the DCAU wiki. And uh, that's why I was like looking up information about the episode. And uh, I would say, like, this was Hugo Strain's uh, only spoken, uh, uh, you know, appearance in the series. He appears later on in Justice League as a cameo chat. He works for Amanda Waller, part of Cadmus. And that he's probably the reason why she knows Bruce Wayne is Batman. He probably is the one who told her. It's like, oh, it all makes sense. He, she recruited him, much like she recruited several other villains who have kind of popped up. Uh, before, like Clock King, he's in Justice League Unlimited, he, he's on the Suicide Squad team, it's like, oh, that's nuts, but uh, the reason why they had it, he was supposed to get an expanded role in Justice League Unlimited, he was going to be one of those recurring threats alongside Amanda Waller in that series, and it was like, oh, that's cool, but they couldn't use him because of this, I don't know if you guys know about it, I talked about it before a few times, but the it was called the Bat Embargo, which was a period of time between uh, like 2000, like 2004, and all the way up to 2008, or actually went all the way through like the Dark Knight trilogy, and it, the Warner Brothers and, and DC executives said basically to Bruce Tim and his team that you can use Batman in Justice League, but you can't use any villains. You can only use. A, a, and it, he managed to get the Joker for that one. Uh, for those uh, two, uh, those episodes that he did in the first season of Justice League, where the Joker comes back and he's part of the Injustice, the, in, the Injustice League, and then later on when he takes over Vegas with the um, the Royal Flush Gang, or his his version of he creates the Royal Flush Gang, and after that you're like you really don't see any of the Batman villains with the exception of maybe a couple of cameos, but they have no speaking roles, and for whatever reason they had a they had the bat embargo because of two things: one of Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. And two, they had The Batman, which is that other car cartoon made by the Jackie Chan uh, people, which is actually a really good show. And The Batman's fine. It's just, you know, it wasn't, it, it's okay. I think that show got better as it went along when, once they brought in the sidekicks and partners and uh, Batgirl and, and Robin. I think that's when the show really kind of hit its stride. Beforehand, not so much. But that was the reason. And he wanted to have these characters come back and be recurring villains throughout Justice League, all these Batman rogues, but they weren't able to do it because of that weird mark, because they thought people, they thought kids would be confused of t uh, because there were two Batman cartoons at the same time, Justice League and the Batman in the Dark Knight trilogy. I guess they, they they thought kids and adults would assume that they're all connected. And it's like, to me, that just really pisses me off because it's like it's just these executives assuming just how dumb we all are. It's like we get that they're two separate things or three separate things. And that really sucks to me because I would have liked to have seen a lot of the rogues gallery, Batman's rogues gallery in Justice League. I mean, aside from Joker... And a cameo, because uh, Hugo Strange, he's, he's at a meeting at Cadmus, and you see him like, that's him, and he says nothing. He just kind of looks over occasionally like this, and he's like, ah, and, that, and that's it. And then uh, we see Professor Milo. He gets killed by Darkseid, uh, or not Darkseid, uh, Doomsday, at one point. So he fucking he went from experimenting on animals to then uh, working on the Doomsday Project. And then, of course, you know, Joker and everything. But it's like, that's a goddamn shame that we couldn't, have seen more Batman villains just like that's what I've always been adamant chat 
I've always been adamant for years, like, you could go back and do sequel series to all these shows. I would love another season of Batman the Animated Series or Superman or Static Shock or Justice League. You can create new ones, too. You could do, you could do one of them, but it's all set in that DCAU continuity. I know that on comics in recent years, it's called, like, Batman the Continued Adventures, where they're starting to tackle more recent Batman stories. So, like, The Red Hood, Jason Todd. And um, uh, they also have uh, uh, the Court of Owls. And I was like, that is really interesting. And I would, I would love to see that in the end. I mean, maybe they'll do it someday. But, you know, they got that new Batman cartoon coming out. So I, that's what I was hoping was going to be like a sequel series to that. But no. Nah. Now, nah, I suppose not, chat. Oh, I mean, is there a lot of bad buffering, chat? Sorry for the buffering. I'm not sure what's going on uh, with that. I, I may, it, might be, it might be the squirrels. It might be the... Um, Spectrum might be having some issues. I might have to reset the box. So if it continues on, chat, please, uh, please let me know. But, uh, but sorry about that. Sorry. Look, that's okay. Not gonna lie, as a kid, I always uh, wanted the Batman universe to cross over with the Batman the Series. See, so you're the problem. <laughs> oh, that's I mean, so the Batman was crazy for kids. I don't remember that episode. See, I, I only remember like maybe the first season, the later seasons. I don't remember the zombie stuff. I don't remember that at all. Uh, we got a new animated static. Oh, is that happening? Oh, shit. Prime Meal uh, likes that and encouraged him to use other villains. Come. True, true, true. That's true. I mean, th th even Bruce Tim said it was frustrating that we weren't able to use these characters that we had created and we formed these relationships with all these actors who did such a great job and we couldn't use them. But then they were able to use them in different roles. So, like Mark Hamill, you obviously know for the Joker, he voiced Solomon Grundy and he voiced the trickster in those in that series. And so they're like, they we had they had to use villains they wouldn't think of ever using. Which was cool. Which was which was um that 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 you know that provided a a, a greater view of the DC universe chats. So we're not seeing the same thing. So now we're getting like, oh, it's like you're using these B and C and D listers in unique ways. So that was fun. That's a good point. But at the same time, I still would have really liked to have seen a lot of these uh, classic Batman villains come uh, come back older and how would they operate in, in a world with the Justice League. That would have been interesting to me. Aside from Joker, which of course they're like, all right, we'll let you lose Joker. I mean, come on, he's Joker. Of course, yeah. Oh, but now... But now, chat, let's go ahead and get into Batman, the animated series, episode 37, The Strange Secret of Bruce Wayne, a personal favorite of mine, chat. And we start off on Gotham Bridge, chat, and we're following Judge Judy Vargas herself. Good old Judge Judy, chat. She's completely alone. She has this big old briefcase filled with something heavy, and she looks nervous. And Batman's like, there's something about Judge Judy that just doesn't sit well with me, so I've been stalking her this whole time on Gotham City Bridge. And so she goes over the bridge, goes like the middle portion of the bridge where our cars... I don't know, it's the middle of fucking... I know it's nighttime, but it's like, no one's using this bridge except these two thugs in a car and Judge Judy? I don't know, Chad, I don't believe it. There's This is, this is weird to me, but anyway... I'll allow it. I'll let it pass. But Judge Judy, she's confronted by these two thugs. And they're like, hey, you, you got the money? She's like, I have it right here. And they take it. And, you know, this one guy who looks like uh, Peter Lowe, he's like, yes, count the money, yes. And the one guy, he doesn't, he doesn't really count it. He just kind of, like, takes a big old wad of cash and just does the little flips through the bills. And he listens to it. And he's like, yeah, yeah, uh, you're 20K short, 20000 dollars short and he's like oh I'm so sorry I'm so sorry Judge Judy it looks like you didn't pay us what we're owed you now need to pay a hundred thousand dollars on top of what you're paying now she's like I don't have that kind of money and he's like well you don't want this tape getting out there do you what people the things people will say when they learn what you did all those years ago. She's like, please, please, I can't have that revealed. And Batman's like, I've seen enough. He comes down and he starts beating the shit out of Peter Lorre and the other guy, chat. And this causes uh, the, all the money to like just get, you know, get blown away. They grab some of the cash and they jump in. One of the guys jumps in the cars, Batman just beating the shit out of him. Uh, but all, but the tape is let go and the tape skids and it ends, out, it ends, uh, ends up on the side of the bridge on this like girder. 
And fucking Judge Judy's like, I have to get that tape. And she can't help herself, so she's climbing over it, Chad. She's trying to grab it. Uh, meanwhile, Batman, he's busy punching, but he sees Judge Judy. He's like, Judge Judy, don't do it. You're too old. And but she's like, I have to get it, Batman. And so Batman, he's like, I really want to keep punching you, but I can't. He stops punching Chad, and he goes after Judge Judy. While the other two thugs, Peter Lorre and co., they get as much of the cash as they can, throw in the fucking car, and they speed down the high. Well, Batman's like, oh, God. God damn it. But he goes after Judge Judy. She's on the girder. She grabs the tape, but she passes the fuck out because she's old and like, oh, and she's about to slip on over. Batman's like, God damn it. He jumps for Chad, grabs her, uses the back grapple, swings to the side, and he's like, Judge Judy, are you okay? And she's not okay, Chad. She's not. And then it's later on in the night. Gotham PD are over there. They're taking questions and they're doing interviews. And, and Commissioner Gordon, he's holding the hand of Judy, Judge Judy. And Batman's looking over them and eventually they wheel her away. And he's like, I'm sorry, Batman. She seems to be okay, but the doctors don't know when she'll recover. Looks like she had quite a fright. I don't understand it. She was. I had lunch with her the other, uh, the other week and she was great. Just got back from vacation from that, um, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, Spawn Resort, Yaka Springs. And, you know, it's, mm -hmm, this Yaka Springs, huh? Well, just, she didn't look like she got a lot of uh, rest and relaxation. It seemed like she was stressed out about what was going on and possibly what was on this tape. And so he's like, I'm going to look into this gym. And he's like, you need any help, Batman? He's like, nope. <laughs> and he grapples away where we see the bat plane. The bat plane's overhead. She had the bat wing. He goes up there and you know who's flying? It's Robin. He's like, hey, Batman, home from college. He goes, dick to the bat cave. I need a vacation, which is the last thing you think Batman would ever say. But Bruce is like, I gotta investigate this Yaka Springs. There's something about this because he also, he runs the plate in the car because he has that photographic memory. He's like, Robin, also run the, because they're flying home. He's like, Robin, can you run the plate on the car? And he's like, sure. And it's registered to the area that is around Yaka Springs. And so I was like, okay, this is all fucking connected. It's all connected. And apparently, Chad, that place is also owned by Roland Daggett, who does not appear in this episode, which is interesting. So it's like Roland Daggett, he's got so many nefarious schemes, he can't even keep track of it. Oh, it's like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, Dr. Hugo Strange, all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll, let him do what he wants. And so Roland Daggett, uh, uh, you know, he operates that. That division, I suppose. Though it seems to be uh, Hugo Strange's uh, pet project. And so then we cut. Then we cut, and uh, Bruce goes to the resort with Alfred. They're unpacking everything. And I love it because there's like a recurring gag in this episode where Alfred, he's, you know, he's so... Uh, anal retentive about uh, cleaning things and so he's just cleaning random things around the resort <laughs> like he's going to different people's rooms and just making sure their laundry is done he can't help himself he's dusting things in the lobby everyone's looking at him. like what the fuck are you doing man you're showing us up I can't help it that you're so bad at your jobs okay it's my thing and so He's like, Alfred's confused. He's like, uh, uh, Master Wayne, Bruce, I, I didn't think you would want to take a vacation. Bruce is like, oh, believe me, I don't. I'm extremely stressed out. But I need to investigate this, Alfred. And it has something to do with this Dr. Hugo Strange. According to um, uh, Judge Judy, according to her file, she had uh, seen him here. And this is when all these events have transpired. And I have a fucking meeting with him in 15 minutes. And he's like, and Alfred's like, do you need anything? He's like, I'll let you know, Alfred. Don't you worry. But make sure just to not leave the room just clean everything in the room he's like i won't i won't do that i'm gonna leave the room and clean things he's like all right fuck it fine and so uh, uh bruce he goes and meets with dr hugo strange which they've given him a very thick german accent ah he's bat oh not batman uh, not yet <laughs> ah bruce wayne so good to see you here my friend hey it is it is an honor to meet such a, a incredible industrialist like yourself and he's like yeah it's great to be here and he's like well before we begin, I would like to start with our common therapy practices, which is to strap you into a fucking gurney and to hook up these power nodes to your fucking skull so we can appear into your mind chat where it literally the, the via the nodes, it is then projected onto a screen behind Bruce Wayne and Hugo Strange can watch it chat and record it. And it's like interesting. And so he starts talking about uh, Bruce Wayne's past. He's like, you have trauma in your past don't you mr vane 
so many struggles for a man such as yourself. He's like, I mean, I had an ordinary childhood. He's like, Bruce, you did not have an ordinary childhood, okay? You, that's a goddamn lie. He's like, are you sure? Because we see uh, Bruce's childhood play out where he's like, oh, he's walking. Remember when B Batman's parents got shot? Well, you're going to see it again. Walking down that alleyway, chat, boom, boom, pearls and shit. No! He was like, the death of your parents was quite traumatic on you. It changed you, didn't it, Mr. Vane? And it's like, my childhood and the death of my parents is well known to society. What difference does it make? Hugo is like, I'm just here to help you, Bruce. Just here to help you. Let us go deeper. And so they go deeper, Chad. And we see little Bruce Wayne at the grave of his parents. And he swears vengeance. He's like, what did you seek above all else, Mr. Vane? I sought revenge. And we see all these bats fluttering. And we see that the one bat turns into the bat symbol. And we see that little Bruce Wayne is now in full Batman regalia. And Dr. Hugo Strange is like, holy shit, you're Batman. He doesn't say that, but he's like, oh. And he's like, oh, I'm going to record this. And he records it all. And Bruce is like, I think I've had enough of this, Doctor Strange. He's like, of course, of course, I understand. The first, the first session is... Uh, overstimulating. We could have another one tomorrow. We could continue to talk, Mr. Vane. And he's like, uh, okay, cool. And so uh, Batman leaves and Hugo Strange is like, I'm going to make so much fucking money with this video. And it's the 90s chat, so it's a cassette tape. It's a VHS. And so who you think, who the fuck, you think he's going to call chat? Who do you think he's going to fucking call? The Joker. Of course he's going to call the Joker, Chad. So we cut to the Joker's hideout and everything. You see all the gadgets and the gizmos and the dead bodies and things. And then we hear the ring-a-ding-ding -ding on the Joker's phone, which is just like someone laughing. <laughs> Until eventually it's like, oh, dear, you definitely called the wrong number. Well, why don't you leave a message after the shriek? <laughs> We'll get back to you soon. Bye. And it's like, hello, Joker. I think I have obtained something that you would be very interested in. <laughs> and it's like, ooh. And then we cut, chat. We cut uh, because fucking uh, Dr. Hugo Strange, he's going to do an auction for the tape. And he is contacting the biggest villains in Batman's rogues gallery who will be interested in finding out the identity of the Batman, chat. And it's like, ooh, cool. Um, we see that... Uh, that there's like a lot of cars leaving uh, the spots, the thugs that Batman tracked down before, and Batman reckon or Alfred recognizes them, and he goes over to Bruce, who's just doing like a hundred fucking push-ups because he's like really stressed out. Like that's how he deals with his trauma, just by working out uh, physically until he's exhausted. And Alfred's like, uh, 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 Bruce, I think um, like a lot of those people are are leaving. I think Doctor oh, Doctor Hugo Strange also leaves with them because he's gonna greet the villains as well. And Bruce is like, this is a great opportunity for me to look at that machine, Alfred. Okay, stay out of trouble, old man. He's like, you know it, Bruce. And so then, uh, Bruce, he sneaks into Hugo Strange's office with, with his, you know, mind recorder. And he finds, like, all these uh, tapes of various people, Chad. And he also finds the tape of, of Judge Judy, Chad, Judge Judy Vargas. And he takes that fucking tape puts it in to the machine, and he sees why Judge Judy was so scared, chap, because as a child, she was an arsonist, and she was responsible for the great uh, uh, Gotham Dock fire 30 years ago, Jack, killed 20 people, and she's lived with that for her entire life, and Batman's like, she's going to jail, I, this is great, I got all of these, he's just taking all the tapes, actually he starts erasing them, because he doesn't want anyone else to, like, these are their personal secrets, he's like, no, nah, she's a fucking criminal, <laughs> just starts jerking off, he's, he, these, this, these people are criminals, I'm gonna take these, he's like, I could use this, this would be great. Uh, but he also sees that his tape is missing. He's like, oh, shit. He knows I'm Batman. <laughs> well, that's not good. And so he's like, oh, he's going panic mode. And he just starts erasing all the tapes. Meanwhile, we cut to this airstrip, like, in the middle of the fucking desert, Jack. Because we're somewhere in the American Southwest, by the looks of it. Somewhere in the American Southwest. We cut. And who steps out, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Ooh, shining sun and fresh air. 
makes you want to be sick. And then who also joins the Joker chat? Two-Face, he's also there right behind him, as well as Oswald Cobblepot chat, the Penguin. And I love it because they have a valet that has their names of a card that says Joker, Two-Face, and the Penguin. And they're like, oh, how you doing, Jeeves? Why won't you help me carry this into my car? And they're like, yeah, sure, Mr. Joker. And he can barely fucking lift it because it's so heavy. He's like, what do you got in here? Oh, just the necessary essentials. A lot of money, a couple of knives, some guns, a few bombs, uh, and my toothbrush. Help yourself. And so they put it all in the car. And they drive, uh, they drive uh, uh, back to the hotel, and they're all getting out at this point. And Alfred's like, ah, shit, there's the villains. There's Joker, there's Two-Face, and there's Penguin. I'm like, this, this, this fucking isn't good. Uh, and then, like, the, the, one of the, the drivers, he's getting out the Joker's bag, and he trips, and he spills all the contents out, and it's filled with money. He's like, hey, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Joker. Oh, it's quite fine. Just make sure every single little bill is Back in the bag, because if it's not, I won't give you your tip. And, well, you might also lose your head. And it's like, don't cross the Joker and steal his fucking money, Chad. He will decapitate you. That's not good. Uh, but at this point, you know, Bruce is, he's still uh, erasing the tapes, and Alfred tells him, like, hey, these, the villains are here. And he's like, oh, okay, Alfred, no, thanks for telling me. I'm going to go ahead and record a new tape just so I can give myself some insurance. We don't see what he's recording, chat, but it's like, okay, he's able, because he figures out this machine is able to record what's on a person's mind. So he's like, hmm, what if I can project something from my mind and create a lie, if you will? So that's interesting. Eventually, Alfred, he's about to leave, but then a guy walks up and goes, Alfred, does it smell like chloroform? He's like, Whoa, and he's chloroform, Chad. He's knocked the fuck out. And then later, uh, Bruce, he, he gets the tape done, puts the fucking uh, tape back in the, in the cassette, and... He starts destroying the machine, but then all oh, they, you know, uh, Hugo Strange and the guards and everyone else, the thugs, they hear this. Alarms are going off, and they're like, son of a bitch. They go in there, they see Bruce doing this. And they capture him. They beat the shit out of him. And they capture him. And he's like, Mr. Vane, what were you trying to accomplish? This machine, yeah, I spent years working on it. All gone. But soon, I shall reveal your identity for a tidy sum. And Batman and Bruce Wayne will be destroyed. But for now, I will keep your appearance here as a secret. As a little side bonus for your very colorful friend friends and so he takes them up to this um like basement area not basement excuse me attic area where alfred's just fucking knocked the hell out he's zonked out chad he comes to and he's like oh master wayne i'm so sorry and he's like don't worry alfred i knew you'd fucking break but i got some insurance don't you worry and so then chad we get to the, the actual auctioning, and where Dr. Hugo Strange is like, thank you, it's so good to see some of Gotham's most colorful individuals join me here at Yaka Springs. And Two-Face is like, get to the goddamn point I don't have all day. And he's like, okay, okay, wonderful, wonderful. Well, we shall start the bidding now, yeah. And then Two-Face is like, $500,000. And Penguin's like, that is nothing but bird feet. It's like, Penguin, we Get it? You do bird puns, okay? Don't do it when you're with us. For the love of God, don't do it. He's like, well, I, I will offer a million dollars. The joke is like, how about two million? And Two-Face is just pissed. He's like, well, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? We're going to outbid each other. This is what we're going to be doing the entire time, arguing the whole time. He's like, you know what, Joker? Why don't you get out of here? Why don't you get out of my fucking face? And Joker's like, which one? And Two-Face freaks out. I love that scene. Which one, Harvey? <laughs> and, he, and right before, they're about to start by penguins like, gentlemen, gentlemen, please, pleasantries, pleasantries. We have come here for the same reason, after all. Why don't we pool our money together and we'll get revenge on Batman, the three of us, the trio, if you will. And Two-Face is like, well, that's not a bad idea. And Joker's like, fine by me, as long as I'm the the one to finally snuff out the bat and they're like cool and so eventually they have enough like money they have like 51 million dollars between all three of them 
$51 million and 17 cents. <laughs> so they put on there and fucking, you know, Dr. Hugo Street's like fucking sold, man. Hell yeah, let's do it. Meanwhile, we cut to Bruce and Alfred. Bruce, you know, he's a master escape artist, chat, and uh, he he has like a little lockpick that he keeps in, in his sweaters. And so he takes the lockpick out, manages to get free himself, and he's like, "You made sure to pack my other suit, Alfred." Of course, Master Bruce. And so you know, fucking uh, Bruce dresses up as then as Batman. He then sneaks into the auction area where uh, Hugo Strange is just about to show the tape. But, ah, Batman hacks in the projector chat, unplugs it, and he puts the other tape in, the one that he created earlier. And so, like, Hugo, he's struggling for the equipment. It's not working. He's like, oh, the momentary technical difficulties, gentlemen. It should be fine. And Joker's like, boo! Boo! Enhance it, Hugo. I can see it. And so eventually they get it going. But, oh, it's not the tape that Dr. Hugo Strange uh, obtained where it's revealed that Bruce Wayne is indeed Batman. No, it's this other tape where Dr. Hugo is going just like, my master plan is almost complete. Those fools, little do they know, my machine can create any reality I want and I can record it and we could scheme and scam those morons any day. <laughs> and, the, and the villains are like, what the Fuck. And Hugo's like, no, 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 it's not the right tape. I swear it's a fake. And they all, they all start like, nah, we're going to kill you now. They all start shooting him at this point. And he just grabs, like, Hugo's fucking panicking. He just grabs a shit ton of money, and he just takes off running. He's like, protect me, ah, protect me, as his thugs are just mowed down by uh, Two-Face and Joker and Penguin. And they're just chasing after him in the park. There's something very funny to me about this, you know, old bald man with all this money in his hands being chased in a parking lot by the Joker, Two-Face, and Penguin. It's very fucking amusing. I love it. And so Hugo eventually uh, uh, gets into a car and he just fucking takes off at that point while the villains, they get in their own cars and they chase after him. He's trying to get to the fucking airstrip. He's like, I got to get the hell out of here. Meanwhile, Batman, he jumps on top of one of the, some of the thugs car and he chases after them. And Alfred's like, I'm still locked up. <laughs> Help me, please. For the love of God, help me. Before he leaves, though, he does tell Alfred, make sure to tell Robin to get here soon. So he's like, oh, so Dick Grayson's going to appear in the episode and uh, make sure he does the thing I told him to do. And Alfred's like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'll make sure to tell him the thing that you told him to do. Sounds good. Eventually, uh, the villains and uh, the villains run Hugo uh, off the road. They grab him, and he's like, "What are you going to do with me?" And Joker's like, "We're just going to go on a nice little trip, and we want you as our special guest, Doctor." And so they take him onto the fucking plane. Like, we got to get the hell out of here. And the plane starts to take off. Batman, he grapples onto it. He's holding on to fucking dear life. He's trying to get back up there. Joker, he's in full pilot regalia. And he flies the plane. Puts it on autopilot. He gets in the back. He's like, okay, boys, this has been so much fun. But a bit of an inconvenience, if I do say so myself. Why don't we let Hugo off here? I think it's getting a little too heavy. He's like, no, I I'll die. He goes, ha, 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 the fall won't kill you. But the sudden impact, <laughs> and like, sounds good to me. Let's throw him out, clown. And Penguin's like, I also agree. Bird pun. And so they, they open the fucking door at this point. But then, uh oh, uh, Batman, he's underneath the plane. He rips out the fuselage. So all the fucking fuel starts to come out of the plane at this point. The plane starts like, <laughs> It starts stuttering and things kind of falling out of the air. Joker goes to the cockpit. He goes, what? And he sees that all the fuels guys He's like, boys, <laughs> don't mean to panic anyone, but we're going down. <laughs> and the plane eventually spinning. And they, they manage Joker. I will say this. Joker, he does make sure that the aircraft lands. So he, he's not killed along with his other guys. So apparently Joker is a, is a competent pilot. Like he knows how to land a plane and take off. So good for him. He has other skills. I, I assume he has his pilot's license but he lands the plane and he fucking gets out he's like every man for himself and he trips as he goes out and oh, lands he's like oh, oh, i hate these kind of landings and batman just comes up he's like shut up you're going to jail punch he just starts punching him 
<laughs> he just starts punching Joker. Eventually, Two Face and a Penguin are like, as much as we love watching you beat the shit out of him, we're the ones that have the guns, Batman. And uh, you know, Hugo's like, please save me, Batman. Yeah. And Batman's like, true, but they have more guns. And they go, what? And we look up, and I'm like, this is the us. Uh, listen. There's a lot of unrealistic things in this episode. Um, a machine that can record your thoughts. Various villains. One clown-themed one who is a walking bird abomination. The other guy where half his body is burned to a crisp. But the most unrealistic thing in this episode is that somehow a Gotham police Zeppelin has arrived <laughs> and is above them. How the fuck did that Zeppelin get there so quickly above the plane? They're like, what the hell? How? <laughs> we will never know. We will never know, Chad, because Joker and Two-Face and Penguin, they're arrested. And uh, Commissioner Gordon is like, well, you were right about Doctor Strange, Batman. He goes, yes, and we'll put a stop to this. And Commissioner Gordon's like, I also talked to Judge Judy, and she told me about the arson that she committed years ago as a child. She's going to jail. Judge Judy's definitely, no, she doesn't go to jail. It was an accident, Commissioner. He's like, I understand, Batman, don't worry. And Hugo Strange is like, fuck you. I still have the tape. I know what your secret identity is. The whole world will know that Bruce Wayne is Batman. But then all of a sudden, Chad, who walks up? And because and, 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 you hear you hear this person go, I don't think so. And it's Bruce Wayne. And Hugo Strange is like, but that's not possible. Bruce Wayne and Batman. No, you're the same, not two different people. And Batman's like, little did you know, Hugo Strange, I contacted Bruce Wayne to be involved in this little operation to fool you I made sure he would project his mind thinking that he was Batman therefore you could get this whole cabal together I could arrest you along with getting all those villains and making sure you don't exploit or blackmail anyone else he goes no no and he's arrested and everyone walks away and it's like you did a good thing for Gotham Bruce I'll see you later no problem Jim and so they all leave and eventually you know uh, Bruce starts laughing but it's not Bruce yet it's Dick it's Dick Grayson and he is a master of disguise much like Bruce's Shay he takes off his Bruce Wayne mask which is somehow the fucking Mission Impossible films he's also standing on stilts <laughs> He's standing on fucking stilts. And he's like, you know, I think my Bruce impression is pretty good, but I don't know how I can fucking stand on these stilts any longer, Bruce. My lord, it must suck being tall. It's like, it's great being tall, Robin. I get to punch so many people as they look uh, they look right at me. And then they all have a good laugh, and Alfred's like, I'm still in the attic. Can someone help me? No, Alfred. No, because Dick Grayson and Batman are having a good laugh, chat. And that, my friends, is my scene by scene by scene by scene breakdown to Batman the Animated Series, episode 37, The Strange Secret of Bruce Wayne. A uh, really good episode, in my opinion, chat. Very, very fun. Love that all the villains came in there. Had some good gags, some good jokes, of course. Anytime it's a joke episode, how can you not love it? <laughs> so good. Ooh, in conclusion, fuck you, Alfred. <laughs> it's true. Well, wouldn't it be easier for him to play Batman? Exactly. <laughs> I thought so, too. Apparently, he's like, Bruce is like, I'm Batman. You're not Batman. <laughs> you're a mean one. Ooh, Mr. Grinch. <laughs> you really Thank you so much, Black Dynamite, for the follow. You're my new Huckleberry. Welcome to stream. Now, if it does this, it doesn't smell like chloroform. <laughs> the real strange secret of Bruce Wayne is mommy, daddy issue. Oh, definitely. That is the secret. That's the secret. I mean, he was strange found out, and he, he he's like, oh, wait a minute. They fucking tricked me. Because later on, he goes to tell Amanda Waller that, oh, yeah, Bruce Wayne's Batman. She's like, oh, cool. And she uses that on him. That's one I always remember from this episode when Two-Face doesn't believe Strange because of his past. Oh, that's right. That's true. So that's pretty cool because in the plane, I forgot to mention this. No, thank you, Batboy. Thank you. So while, while, while they're flying in the plane, uh, Hugo Strange is like, I'll just tell you. I'll just tell you who he is. And like, tell us, Doc. And he's like, B Batman is Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne is Batman. And Two-Face is like, there's no way that's possible. I know Wayne. I know Bruce. He was my friend. And there's no way he could be Batman. And Joker's like, I agree. There's no way that pretty, pompous Prince of Gotham is Batman. <laughs> what a joke. That's true. I do like that Two-Face brings up the fact, like, I knew him. There's no way he could be Batman. But he was. He was, Chad. Which is true. 
Oh, my Lord. Jacob piloted a plane in the world's finest. Yeah, he did. So he fucking knows how to fly planes. He pilots a plane here. And in another episode of Batman Animated Series, he knows how to pilot a plane. So he clearly, he clearly likes flying planes. I think that's like a passion of his. Oh, my Lord. Half a million dollars. Oh, get it? Half? <laughs> I understand. But I hope you guys liked this review. It was so fun. Doesn't Strange dress up a bit for, uh, Batman for a bit? Does he actually fight people? No. In the comics, he does that. In the comics, he, he does. He's been known to do that. Because he wants to be... Doctor Strange is obsessed with... Doctor Hugo Strange. I keep calling him Doctor Strange. But, you know, Doctor Hugo Strange, he's obsessed with Batman. He wants to be Batman. That's his thing. In the comics, in a, in a Batman graphic novel called Prey, which is also kind of like a sequel, in a way, to Batman Year One, he dresses up as the character. He, dr he dresses up as Batman. And then Bobby jerks off in the costume. Oh, Starbucks! There goes Mr. Grimm. If it gave a prize for being me, the winner would be him. Thank you, Starbucks, for subscribing. You have indeed returned. Welcome five months of support. Four months away from front pooping out that Twitch, baby. Thank you so much. Uh, I like both iterations of Strange. Only criticism of Arkham Strange. He's a protege of... I didn't mind that. I thought that was kind of cool, his protege of Rachel Al Ghul. No, it's still cool. It's still a really good episode, chat. But yeah, no, thank you again. Thank you uh, uh, again, Bat Boy, for bringing up the. I forgot about that. He wore Two Face mentions. He knows Bruce. That's that's pretty good. Um, that's pretty good little scene right there. Very good, very good, chat. See, you help me out. You help me out these reviews, and I appreciate it. Drazel has a mannequin girlfriend. He puts the Batman call in the comics. Oh yeah, he's fucked up. I mean, he was a psychiatrist and everything, but he's crazy. It's crazy. Praise underrated. Legend of the Dark Knight is interesting. So, yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, I actually own it. I own the, the graphic novel. It's nice. Bro, Cyber Broden. I hope you're doing well today. Robin should have just been Batman, but Bruce has to. Batman's like, Bruce is like, I'm fucking Batman. You will never put on the cape and cowl. <laughs> I'm not going to let Alfred do it. I, mean, maybe, I think even Alfred's maybe dr dr uh, dressed up as Batman on occasion. It's nuts. No, you wear the green tights, dick. That's what you wear. Not going to let anyone be Batman, except, obviously, he does. By the time we get to Batman Beyond, I'm letting Terry do it. So, But, yeah, it was a hope you liked the review chat. Now, my friends, now we shall go ahead and jump into some death loop. Going to get that figured out. So let me just move a few things around. We're going to have some fun. Uh, you know, in the meantime, why don't you go ahead, as I switch out some wires, and you guys can bear witness to... Oh, where is he? Oh, the Dirty Sonic Boy. I'll be right back. He could fight Batman, too, chat. He would definitely infect him with an STD.